guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. Today I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite gobies of all time, the scarlet goby, or Rhinogobius chui. Now they're from the Guadong province in China. Now they inhabit shallow, well oxygenated, fast flowing streams in the wild. So it's important to take this into consideration when setting up your tank for them. Generally, the substrate is similar to what I have in my 150 gallon, so small, fine gravel, and then some areas of jumbled rocks. And this allows them to set up territories as the males are pretty feisty. Now, the nice thing about this fish, unlike some of the other hill stream stuff, is they are very breedable. It's not necessarily easy, but it's definitely doable. And since they range anywhere from $70 to $100 a pair, it's really worth the time. Now, ideally you would keep them in a breeding setup because of their rarity, but if you wanted to set up a small community, some fish that work well with them are micro debario, things like Kubatai's Rasbora, the little neon green dudes, or white clouds, uh, any of the tenichthys will work well, and other fish that like that sort of high oxygen content. Now, it's important to remember that oxygen content does not always mean flow. With these guys, you can get away with uh, a lot of bubble count, a lot of bubble output from your filter, and it's important to remember that in warmer temperatures, the oxygen saturation goes down, so no heater for these guys unless it gets really cold in your tank. Generally, you want to keep them anywhere from mid-60s to mid-70s. Now, they do come from slightly harder water, so usually a pH of 7 to 7.8 is best. I don't find them to be that particular, but I think you'll get the best breeding behavior in that range. Now these guys do do well with aquatic plants too, which is nice because not all of the hill stream species do. These guys don't disrupt your plants, and they might actually even utilize them as part of their territories. Again, they're just really gorgeous. So let's take a look in their quarantine tank so you can see some of their behavior and just how striking they are. Now you can see this quarantine tank is not very glamorous, but I do that for a few reasons. These fish are pretty expensive and I want to be able to make sure that I can monitor them really closely when they're in quarantine. I haven't been able to get them for several years, so I was really excited when I was able to get them recently. So I bought all that the distributor had. As I mentioned, these guys have a really strong prey drive, so it's important to have live foods. And I'm going to offer them some white worms right now just so that they'll all come out and we can see them a little easier. As you can see, these guys are really gorgeous. Just phenomenally beautiful fish. The males get that darker color with the red seams and the white edge to their fins. You can see a male there. He's got the bolder coloration with the blue to whitish seams to his fins. There's another male. They're probably going to spar. See the flaring? I mean, these guys are just so gorgeous. It's unbelievable. There's a female in the background. But you can see how strong their prey drive it is. It is, it's, it is really important to. Uh, offer them live foods and this gives you a good example as well as the size of white worms. Now these guys are only um, maybe an inch and a half at full size if that. It's another one. Phenomenal. As I mentioned it's important to to have ample spots for them to set up territories because they will they will flare constantly and just exhaust each other trying to establish their territory. But also, as I mentioned, these are very breedable. It's a female up on top of the sponge filter. And you can see the sponge filter has quite a lot of bubble output, which is really important for these guys in maintaining their oxygen levels. Again, you can add a power head or something that puts more directional flow, but it's really not necessarily required for these guys. In an ideal world, you would keep these with one male to several females, but generally speaking, you can only buy them in pairs, 
so it, it can be really challenging to do that. Now, as I mentioned, they deposit their eggs on the ceilings of a cave, and then the eggs are guarded by the males. Uh, they generally pick an area, not necessarily a specific site to breed, and the females usually initiate the courtship. If you notice that your pair has disappeared, it's pretty likely that they're spawning. Usually they'll disappear for, you know, three to five days, and then the female will be kicked out, and the male will stay and guard the eggs. Normal clutch sizes you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 eggs. At that time, once the eggs are laid, you want to remove the female and just leave the male guarding the eggs. You see there's a male here in the foreground showing off for that lady in the background. Uh, incubation for the eggs is about two to three weeks. And the males fan the eggs constantly, sort of like an ancestress to keep them from fungusing. And then once they hatch, the parental care ends. Now the babies hatch with a huge yolk sac and it takes about a week for them to absorb that at which point you want to start feeding them small foods. Now again these are not a common fish but they're not as hard as they sound. You know they're, they're not for the begin, beginning fish keeper but they're, they're certainly doable as long as you can maintain some sort of live food culture. I, I prefer worms think they're more nutritionally complete. These are definitely one that's worthwhile to breed, especially for resale reasons. Just incredibly beautiful. You can see how sassy they are. You know, a lot of times little fish don't necessarily have the biggest personalities, but these guys these guys are a really notable exception to that. The gobies in general just have a lot of sass. You can see that male just saying that is his territory. And here's another one coming in to challenge. They open their mouths real wide and flare. You can really tell the dimorphism here with the, the edging on the fins. So if you're in the market for a good breeding project, get, consider these guys. They're just really cool and very rare. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find information on upcoming speaking events, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my Tuesday tips or Sunday Species Spotlights.